to the show. I'm actually dying to watch this rock and roll all night. <laughs> all right, you. What's your name? I'm Chris. That's okay. You can hear him. I'm on Rock and Roll All Night. It's Mark St. John. We're doing a little interview. How you doing, everybody? I was just wondering, what are you doing now? Is there anything we can look forward to getting or picking up? Well, I came out with a CD about a month ago, and it's on Lock This Monster Records. It's a twice on EP, okay. and uh, it has some of my best guitar player on it. There's two instrumental songs, and the other three songs I had co-writers from. Um, Peter Chris was on it, and uh, cool. a couple of songs on me and him played together, and a couple of other people. How are you doing? We're gonna yeah, you doing? turn this Fine. way over here. Great. Right. Thanks for coming How out. What have you been up to? That's what they're interviewing me about. Oh. <laughs> just, you want to take over? Go ahead. No, no, it's all right. <laughs> yeah. So that means you've done anything since White Tiger? Or? Yeah, I just came out to you last night. You might have to get oh, closer. Okay. Um, they're selling in here, I think. There's someone sitting in here, you know? There's someone yeah, sitting in here. They're so, all out. They're, that's all out. Yeah. Um, you can get on the internet. Okay. Just look up PS and we'll find it sometime. Oh, okay. Okay. Pleasure meeting you. Bye bye. Okay. So, um, where can we pick up that? Wait, is there somewhere online or just anywhere? We, I don't have it. I don't. It's, it's, I don't have a distribution deal yet. That's, okay. When the, when the LP comes out, we'll help. But the mini EP, it's a five song. And a friend of mine is doing it on the internet and they're selling on the internet so far. So, I, I haven't even heard it, but it, it sounds really good, I hear it. All right. It's sold out everywhere, I think. We've, it's been on a month and sold 5,000 copies. So it's been really good. Oh, that's pretty good. That's yeah, good. Really good. It's called the Mark St. John Project, and I look like a computer graphic idiot, and a friend can't tell it's me. Oh, it's all uh, digitally yeah, yeah. enhanced or whatever? Yeah, and they had a couple of people from playing the sweet playing, the bass player and the drummer, and a singer from the band, and Phil Marvel from uh, Valentin, with Billy Sheen. Uh, and got, I can't even think. Sorry, Phil. Um, <laughs> That's all good though. And um, watch out for our logo. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, okay, the number two question. All right, yeah. Uh, you said up on stage that the arthritis kicked in during, right near the, uh, the filming of the video, Heaven's on Fire. No, it was before that. I did the album. And, um, how can I say this? I was home today. Right. My big, you know, I left my family, my friends, girlfriend, you know, everything, cars. And I wanted to go back home after the album. They said, you didn't want me to so I said, yeah, okay. And so I went back and I just got it somehow. Um, and I saw the whole thing. I didn't know the stress and anxiety and my health, you know, that type of thing. But um, I read the C.K. Lent book, uh, Kiss and Sell, C.K. Uh, Lent. Chris? Yeah, Chris Lent wrote a book. He wrote a Kiss book? Kiss and Sell, yeah. Everybody's writing a book. God, what, what are you going to write a book for? Yeah, you should write. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want to. Um, what do you call that? Speaking of life, right? It's like overexposure. So what is the first thing? He, yeah, he said in there that um, you probably would have left anyway because for some reason it didn't seem like you fit in or no, you weren't. It's probably. Yeah. You know, no, Chris, Chris was the one. Chris was the one like. Besides going to the doctor, we get plugs in his head. Um, <laughs> he's the ones that um. Okay, Mark, we're going to buy some shoes and, uh, and we're going to get you a place and, uh, uh, you know, he took me around. He was their money. He's the guy on tour that when it's done, he goes to promoter and gets paid. He's the money man. He carried all the money for Kiss. Oh, all right. Um, yeah, that's what he did. Okay. You want to I didn't know him that well, but... Oh, okay. I'm sure he looked into this good thing more or less that long, but he, he was cool. He, is that what all the questions you asked him or what he said? Um, uh, about Mark, uh, you know, you want to yeah. fit anyway? Yeah, that's what he said. He said that it didn't well, he, seem like you fit in with them. And well, I, I, I know. Um, was it Brief and Mark? Howard Mark? Yeah, Mark. Howard yeah. Mark. And what's the other guy? One of the guys committed suicide. Really? Um, oh, I didn't know. Howard Mark. Or, I can't remember. It's been such a long time. I don't even know your name. <laughs> Chris. Chris. <laughs> <Okay>, Chris. <laughs> You got good editing machine, right? No. Yeah, yeah, we do. We yeah, have an editing yeah. machine. <laughs> it's like two VCRs put together to make an editing machine. <laughs> Tiny little so home. I know, a shop right here is there. Can we talk to Mark? No, but right. I'm not saying anything. Okay, yeah, we'll wrap it up. Uh, Bye. So, very good. We'll look forward to that. And are you doing any other conventions? Um, Toronto and um, November? November. November. Uh, Los Angeles.
I don't know. I saw October? it. Yeah. Tired All right, no, that, this is good, so people will know, you know, if you go check it out. Tired, sorry. <laughs> go All right, thank you no very problem. much. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks a lot. subject comes up with you and Gene's like, well, you know, it, it, it's, it, it was really one of you like, well, you, play with, you don't play with your head, you play with your dick, you know? Did you, did you take any umbrage to what Gene said about you on the video? Well, actually, Gene was the one that got me in the band. Um, Paul had a problem with it. Uh, and I've never heard him say anything derogative until, like, a couple of these things. But I think um, you get sick of listening to people say, uh, Mark, Mark, and so you kind of like kind of post off but so I, I don't think it's, it's meant to be mean or anything, it's just showbiz. You know. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. How are you doing, Mark? I'm uh, What did happen to that project you were working on with Peter versus Keith? Why didn't that ever get off the ground? Um, yes. Well, Peter was going through a divorce at the time, and uh, he was staying over at my house and all that, but um, we did a demo with about 12 songs, and um, Let's see. We sent it to a bunch of record companies, and at the time the record company said, We like what you're doing, but we're not interested at the time. So I actually quit the band because we did it for about a year. I wasn't making any money. So I told Peter, I can't do this anymore. He took it really wrong, though. He took it like, you know, I fucked him up or something. But he was actually living at my house. And uh, he went on from that, you know. He went on to do other things. I did other things. You know, it's a long time not making any money. Yeah. Uh, what did you do before Kiss? Was Kiss the main break, breakthrough for you? Well, I was doing seminars at NAMM shows with different guitar companies. I'm doing a lot of teaching. Thank you. No problem. Ask away. How are you doing? Not too bad, Mark. Um, how was how was it like working uh, filming this video for Heaven's on Fire? What was that like? Um, actually, I was in the hospital and. Um, they wanted me to come out to New York, but um, they came out here and they sent a limo to the hospital and I, I wasn't supposed to be out, the doctor didn't want me out and did a video and I was really in a lot of pain doing that because I was in the middle of my therapy, but uh, it had to be done, you know, business, so um, had some fun. Did they ever, uh, did you ever ask if you were, if they were still touring in makeup, if they were still in makeup, do you know what your therapy would be? No, I have no idea. You know. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of the uh, Heaven's on Fire video, did you know that it's hard to tell the difference in the first place between you and Gene? You know, you almost alike in that video? Really? Yeah. Have you heard that before? Is that a video? No, you're the first one. I know I'm taller than Gene, but he looks bigger you're, than anybody. You're thinner, too. Yeah, well, <laughs> 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 thank you. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Hi. 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 Yeah. How'd you get into KISS? How did it start for you? Um, the power to be always considered one of the better guitar players in Southern California. And there are certain people who, um, how can I say this, recommended me from um, guitar companies. I was endorsed by um, Wayne Charvel mm -hmm. and Grover Jackson. Paul was friends with them. And, um, they said, give me the 10 best guitar players. That was a hot guitar back then. Well, 15 years ago, and uh, I was one of the guys that sent a tape, and they liked it. And, um, but I don't really think that's what got me the audition because they went to 200 guitar players. I had a singer in a funk band back in the late, early 70s named Mike Portis, and he was actually um, Paul Stanley's maid, 
And, um, and he saw my name on the list, and he told Paul, all those other guys are junk, get this guy, he's better than all of them. And so it was a little inside help there, but um, kind of freaked Paul out, I think. And it was really kind of easy doing it. The whole thing about it is, um, how can I say this? I was playing violin concertos at the time, like Paganini, Bikini, and stuff like that. I was, and I had to give all that up and go back to like power chords and stuff, and got off right up a little bit after that. So it was definitely a culture shock for me. Yeah. I've heard you mention Paul and Gene's uh, names quite a bit, but I'd like to know what's your greatest memory of Eric Carr. Eric. God, God bless his soul. Um, Eric and I got along the best in the band because he is also a new member. And so he's, he felt for me going through it. Because I'm from California, Huntington Beach. And they're from New York, so definitely a lot of difference in lifestyle, just slang, just doing things, just like, you know, so square in a circle. So um, he helped me out a lot. Um, he wasn't very happy in the band when I was in the band. Um, he wanted to do more, and they, were, they contained him a lot. He wanted to sing more, he wanted to contribute more, and they were, um, they put a limit on what he was doing. He'd get hurt a lot. And, I felt for him. I remember him the most. Um, I think of him using an extra large can of extra super holy hairspray every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm on the end of album, I had read that Bruce Kulick plays on Lonely as the Hunter. Yeah, he plays on two songs. Um, Why was that? Were you, was your illness at the time? Well, or? no, no. I, um, Gene was doing a movie. And Paul was off at the Bahamas with Lisa Hartman, and um, uh, let's see, um, the record company wanted the album in two weeks, uh, a deadline four weeks, and we weren't done. Gene was in one studio, I think it was um, uh, 54, I think, I'm not sure, and Paul was at right track, and what we were doing, they're sending me back and forth, can I use Mark now? No, can I use, like, go and text guy back and forth and record? And they needed somebody else to hurry up and get the album done, so Eric, I mean Bruce, um, played on two Gene songs, but I'm sure she had some other songs. It was like a deadline, you know, like, it's more like, okay, make or break it, so I didn't mind. Uh, yes, sir? In 91, 92, what happened to your deal with Rock Hard Records? Keep the I'd like to know that, too. Um, <laughs> so would I. Uh, yeah, um, where did those guys go, anyway? Um, I never heard from them again. I, they spent a lot of money advertising and promoting that in some magazines, Cashbox and Billboard and all that. And um, I think, you know, talk the talk to the walk the walk type of thing. Yeah, we got stuck up in that. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, well, it's not too good of a thing. Get your hopes up, but, you know, I hope they're doing better now. I'm doing better. That's good. Thank you, Brian. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Um, What's my favorite? What's my favorite guitar work on Animal Life? God, I haven't heard the album in a long time. <laughs> Any, anything I play, everything I play. Um, <laughs> geez. Well, let's do it now. <laughs> 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 yes, sir. Uh, another question. Um, I had read that the show or the show and a half that you did perform. That yeah. You were pulled aside and kind of chastised by Gene and Paul. Um, well, you had up stage Paul well, on stage. Well, yeah. Well, while we were playing on the audience, yeah. Well, I was, you know, I never rehearsed with them for a live show. So it's not like, okay, we do this song and it's key, we go on it, and, you know, you stand here for the song and move here. So I just went out there, like, being thrown to the lions. And so I just did my schmuck, you know. I started playing with my teeth and behind my back and, you know, going crazy. And Gene pulled me to the side, kind of grabbed me kind of hard on the hand. He goes, don't you ever do that again in front of me. So I guess he felt like I was showing him everything. So the rest of the show, I just stood back with a puppy with his tailbone and his legs and just play guitar like, you know, you know, it's kind of weird. I don't know, whatever. I will ask the thing. Yes, sir. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, you were here, I think he named that after I, I was the original guitar player and I wrote Peter and I co-wrote the song together, and I got rehearsed at my house, and um, I got the other members, and then you went through a couple more transitions or band, they called it that band, yeah. So, how did you meet Peter? Well, Debbie Chris is um, 
fear of life, they're going through some problems. And, and a friend of mine is Debbie's brother. And um, I guess, how, how, I don't know, I think I was looking at a picture in Playboy or something, and someone brought up something. And um, we got together, and it took a couple months, and we did it off real good. He, um, Peter is very interesting. He's like, um, we're very outspoken as far as playing with the other two members. Or else I don't think they could control and that's why probably he left or something, I don't know. But um very good. I think he's from uh, Brooklyn, I think, I'm not sure. Mark. Yeah. Mark, which show and guitars inspired you growing up? Oh, there's hundreds of guitar players. I mean it's like I mean it's like food or like pizza or hamburger or tacos, you know, I mean, there's so many of them, you know, it's like it's I try to listen to two um, guitar players who um, that I wouldn't want to be like and be compared to. I try to listen to other types of music, like um, as far as instrumentation, like a trumpet or a keyboard or, or a violin or something. Take that, how they play their intervals, and use the comparison to influence. But still, that style I like because otherwise, it's like, oh, you sound like him. There's already somebody else. So you're second rate. And you'll never go anywhere. So my advice is like. Don't copy it. You've been hanging all the time. You'll never get nowhere because there's a thousand of them who never got anywhere. You just got to be your own. Got to you know, make your own little thing, so people can identify you from somebody else. If they're going, you know, yeah, generic. Yeah. Did you have any problems with getting here before you got into the band? No, not at all. No, no I wasn't prime form. I was, like I got to say, I was playing violin concerto on the guitar, and. Um, it's very interesting, you know, get, get, get in the arthritis, there's nothing in the family, you know, just woke up one morning, what is it? I think it might have been the stress being in the band. Do you think that if, if that didn't happen with your hand, the way like he and Paul were, would you have, do you think you would have been happy in the band? Or um, I signed the four-year contract, so, um, there was no escape clause for me, so who knows, you know, maybe they would have fired me, maybe I would have been four years. But. Do you like to do expos and conventions? I love it. Being asked by kids, so who, who gets you to do this? Um, well, really the fans, you know, it's the fans that have it, yeah. Um, I love it. I mean, without the fans, I'm nothing. I mean, it was, I wouldn't be up here, you know. Um, well, my mother and father are from I'm sure I have a lot of relatives out here, but I don't know where they are. <laughs> right now, you guys are my relatives. <laughs> yes. uh, I love your work with White Tiger. When you were in White Tiger? White Tiger, yes. yeah. Yeah. Uh, how come that never evolved any further? Um, that was my project, and um, I kind of like took on too big of a load, like. Producer, engineer, arranger, leader, you know, all that stuff. Own my own record company, production come in, the company, so I had all these things and everything was going out, nothing come in. And I kind of like quit my own band because I almost had a nervous breakdown. And we did a, a record and a um, cassette, but never did a CD, but I'm working on remixing the album now. That's great. It'll come out with a CD, hopefully in the next couple of months. Oh, excellent. Great. And then there's a White Tiger 2 demo that we're going to. Get some musicians and go over the best songs and hopefully do that too. Get some uh, fabulous guitar work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Um, first, I want to I want to publicly say thank you for Animal Eyes and thank you for thank being you. part of the the institution we call this band. I really have two questions. The first one is during the sessions for the album, how long did it take to record and how much did, uh, did Gene and Paul uh, ask you to come up with your own, you know, licks for the solo? Yes. Um, the question was about the recording sessions. What did it take to do it? Well, we did the rehearsals, and they were kind of like very sketchy outlines of it, right? And um, then we were going to the studio. Well, Gene went to do his movie, so Paul was left with the production responsibilities. Um, but he wasn't there. He was in on um, Tom was Lisa Hartman, Eric was in Florida with some girl. And so it was me and the engineer, the engineer and I, excuse me. Um, we started recording for about a week, and we spent about 10 grand recording and 
their guitars flying everywhere and the GM's walking back and they hated it. They sat me down and said, this doesn't sound like us. I'm like, I know, it's me. No one else is here playing. So, um, <laughs> it's like, you know, uh, they kind of like had to watch every note I was playing. And to tell you the truth, my best, my very best solo is on the cutting room floor. I mean, they, it's too good. You know, they don't want, they didn't want, they didn't want it to stick out as much as, well, it stuck out anyway, and what the fuck. But, um, <laughs> they didn't want to stick out too much. So, but they were, um, you know, at one time, well, you know, we like it, we don't like it. Like, you know, to me, it, it didn't matter if, if I liked it or not. As long as they liked it, I felt like, wow, I can go home tonight, you know. Did they ever, did they like, have a fire thrown up during that? Were they ever supportive enough that they would at least say, if something sounds good, they would say, yeah, that they would actually tell you that that sounds good? I mean, would they, did they show any, demonstrate <laughs> any support? Um, no, no. Um, they're... I guess they're callous to that. I mean, from all what they've been through, all the albums they've done, it's just like it, it's just like they're doing concrete for another house, or a down, or a laundry tour, and all of it. To me, that's what it felt like. You know? But I had a good time. Yeah. Uh, one other quick thing: Have you seen or, or or spoken or kept in touch with any of them since that time, um, particularly with all that's happening now? You know, I haven't talked to them in, in probably five years, either. Um, Gene sent me an email um, in Brazil a month ago. I don't know, one of my addresses, they probably want to sue me or something. I don't really know. <laughs> 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 Their manager called me and I'm going, um, she has my address and number, what, what do you think? So, whatever. Um, Paul, I haven't talked to in a while. Uh, I talked to Bruce, I think, a couple of times. I, I've never met Ace. I met Vinny once. And of course, Peter. You know, Good old Peter, whatever. Um, but no, um, I'm trying to do my thing, and they're busy doing their things, you know. I have a lot of respect for them, and so for them, and the guys I want to be up here, so it all goes without saying, you know. Thank you. Like yes. Mark, what's your opinion on Ace and uh, his early work with Kiss? I think he's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's cool. I mean, <laughs> I liked him the most when I was a kid, but I never had to listen to Kiss, but. If I did, I'd look like I'd be cool, you know, fire out the guitar and like, you know, just blow up all the, you know, the guitar hero thing. He was cool, I like that. I like to meet him, I like to play with him sometimes, you know. I guess he's a real elusive person, you know, like to, uh, um, does he do things like this? Does he come out of the convention? He used to. Oh, he used to. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Yes, sir. Um, when you were preparing for the Animalized tour, getting ready at some point to play the material live, was there any piece of any material that you found difficult, interesting, or was it boring? Um, like I said, I never had a Kiss album, and I never, um, I didn't know any of the songs. Um, I never prepared for the tour. Like, um, I called up Paul one time. See, I want to go back to California because I was in New York for about, I don't know, two months. I was homesick. Paul didn't want me to go. Well, he let me go. And I called him about two days later. Um, Paul, I got a problem here. I'm in Beverly Hills Hospital. I got a, something wrong with me. So what's going on here? Um, I was in the hospital and they went on tour with Bruce. And um, they called me from a different country every day. Are you ready to come on? No, no. So it's one of those type of things. Yes, I'm going to take two more questions. First two hands. One, two. Very good, sir. Go ahead. How was the how did the ending? How did the ending happen? Yeah. Was it in a letter? Was it a letter? Oh, you mean uh, the, the, the dismissal? <laughs> the, the termination? The firing? Um, oh, where was it? It was in um, Indiana. Terry Hope, Fort Wayne. Um, what was the day before the um, Detroit? It was the day before the Detroit show. We were going to do the video. And I would have been on that. And they decided. Um, they were going to go with Bruce because of um, your used to Bruce and, and my arthritis problem. They had to go on. There was initially no hard feelings. It was more of a, a splitting type thing. And I was really kind of happy because, you know, I was kind of like going, you know, there's a lot of games you can play if you know these guys. And um, I said to myself, well, go back to California, you know, two weeks, seven days, there it is there. <laughs> Any more questions? One more? Yes, sir. You want a new album. What does it sound like? Does it sound like animal eyes or? Um, it sounds like me. Right? <laughs> it's blocking it, right? Um, I, 
I play over the top guitar. Right. Right. I think the, I think you'll like it better than the first Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Do you ever regret how it turned out? Do you wish you had stayed for at least five more years? Oh, no. I, I, everything went really good for me because, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen. Record the album, it could have been a failure. I could have got all these bad reviews. And it happened to be good. And I left, so it's like, I'm very happy, you know. I've heard nothing but good things, you know. And hopefully I'll keep being that way. Yeah. All right, let's give it up for my St. John. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All right, Mark. Mark's going to take about a 15-minute break, and then uh, he'll be signing autographs. Uh, where are we going to? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to line up along the stage here. He's going to sign autographs in that corner of the stage where the table is. Okay. Give him a few minutes. All right. Rock and Roll All Night brings you interviews, reviews, concerts, music, and more. So for more Rock and Roll All Night content, click subscribe.